Wolfgang Abel and Marco Furlan both came from privileged backgrounds, living in the upper echelon communities of their respective countries. Wolfgang was the son of a manager of a prestigious German insurance company, and Marco was the son of a police officer. When they both met in high school, they both agreed that they would rid the world of the undesirables. Afterward, they embarked on a seven-year murder spree. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Wolfgang Abel was born on March 25, 1959 in Dusseldorf, West Germany. Marco Furlan was born on January 16, 1960 in Padua, Italy. They both went to school in Verona and became very close friends. Both of these boys came from well-off lifestyles, with Wolfgang being the son of a manager of a German insurance company and Marco being the son of the head of the Burns unit of the local police force. The boys met in high school and they both shared far-right Nazi ideologies. They both agreed to clean up the world by killing those they thought had deviated from society. This included prostitutes, the homeless, homosexuals, drug addicts, sinful priests, nightclubs, and porn cinemas. They remained friends after graduation and soon began their crime spree. At each crime scene, a leaflet was left in Italian with the heading Ludwig over a Nazi eagle in swastika. The leaflets contained certain slogans such as we are the last of the Nazis or death comes to those who betray the true God. There was also an explanation for the murder. Abel and Furland, now calling themselves Ludwig, committed their first crime on August 25th, 1977 in Verona, where they burned local drug addict Garino Spinelli alive by throwing four Molotov cocktails into his Fiat 126. On December 17th, 1978 in Padua, they murdered waiter Luciano Stefanato, who was gay. He was found with 30 stab wounds and two blades stuck in his back. On December 12, 1979, in Venice, they stabbed 22-year-old drug addict Claudio Costa to death. In Vincenza, on December 20th, 1980, they killed 52-year-old prostitute Alice Moretta with an axe. On November 25th of that same year, they sent a letter titled Ludwig to the newspaper, claiming responsibility for their crimes. On May 25th, 1981, they set fire to an abandoned building in Verona, which had become a shelter for beggars, drug addicts, and the homeless. 17-year-old Luca Martinotti was killed while his friend was seriously injured. Somehow, Abel and Furlan were both acquitted, even though they had sent another letter to the newspaper. This one read, Ludwig, our faith is Nazism. Our justice is death. Our democracy is extermination. Let it be known that we have promptly claimed responsibility for the fire at San Giorgio, in Verona with the message, sent to La Repubblica. We attach a metal disc identical to one applied on the largest of the three used torches, Gott mit uns. On July 20th, 1982, near the Monte Barico, a church in Vincenza, a church in Vincenza, Ludwig stalked Father Gabriel Bogato and Father Giuseppe Lovato, both 70-year-old friars. The two elderly men were ambushed and bludgeoned with hammers. Father Pagato died instantly while Father Lovato died in the hospital hours later. On February 26, 1983, in Trento, they killed priest Don Armando Bison. His body was found with a screwdriver stuck in his skull and a crucifix attached. On May 14, 1983, they set fire to the red light cinema Eros in Milan. Six people died, while 32 were wounded. On January 8, 1984, they started another fire at the Liverpool Disco in Munich, where a woman died and seven others were injured. A third leaflet was sent to the newspaper reading, at the Liverpool, they don't have sex anymore. On the evening of March 4, 1984, Ludwig entered the Melamar Disco in the province of Mantua, where at the time were about 400 young people, most of whom wore a mask for a carnival party. One of the two men, which one disguised as a mime, opened the emergency exit and let in his partner, who had two bags filled with gas cans. After hiding in a dark corner, the two poured gasoline on a carpet and set it on fire. The two, however, were unaware that the buildings were now required by law to install fireproof coverings following a cinema fire which took place a year earlier. The carpet was flame resistant and it slowed down the spread of the flames, and the security officer was able to extinguish it. Once they were caught, they tried to attack the bouncer to escape, but they were stopped, surrounded by the crowd, and finally arrested by police, who 
who saved him from being lynched by an angry mob. The series of attacks committed by Ludwig over a seven year period ended with 28 dead and 39 wounded. Abel was seen by a psychiatrist and this was also requested by Furland's lawyers, but he refused to be seen. Specialists claimed that Abel had a reduced ability to understand the consequences of his actions and it also claimed that he had grown up without the attention that allowed him to develop a healthy personality but this was disputed by many people. I'm sure it was. On February 10th, 1987, both were sentenced to 30 years in prison, although the public prosecutor had asked both to be sentenced to life. What? On June 15th, 1988, the duo would remain in prison until Ferland was ordered to be moved to another prison in Casale de Scadosa, a town in the province of Padua. Ferland escaped from prison in February 1991 just before the final sentence was handed down by the court. He went on the run for four years until he was captured in May 1995 in Crete, living under a false name as he was brought back to Italy. On April 10, 1999, the Court of Appeal in Venice sentenced him to 27 years in prison. Shortly after this arrest, Ferland tried to commit suicide in prison by hanging himself on the bars with a sheet, but he was unsuccessful. After the duo's first arrest in 1998, the name Ludwig was adopted by fanatics of the Italian far right. These people had never met Abel or Ferland, but became attracted to their ideologies from reading the papers. They organized in Florence, Italy on February 27, 1990, where they assaulted several street vendors and immigrant drug dealers in various parts of the city. They too, just like Abel and Ferland, sent letters to the newspaper, claiming responsibilities for the attacks and signing Ludwig. They then decided to attack several nomad camps in Tuscany with bombs, causing several injuries. One specific attack on an immigrant camp in the province of Pisa caused a little girl to lose her eye and her hand. The public outcry against these attacks was intense, especially since some of the victims were children. The police finally captured the offenders, who were a group of younger boys who were even younger than Abel and Furland, both coming from completely different cities. They told police that they wanted to copy the duo. On April 18, 2008, the Milan Surveillance Court disclosed Marco Ferland to social services. Ferland, through his lawyer, had asked to leave prison by day to return at night and on weekends. The plea for his release was rejected, but he was assigned to social services, taking into account his good conduct and now imminent release scheduled for early 2009. On April 24, 2008, Ferland earned his second degree with honors in computer engineering, while on November 12, 2010, after 32 years in prison, he was released on probation for good behavior. In 2009, Wolfgang Abel's status was changed to house arrest after his sentence ended and he served another probation period. On November 24, 2016, Wolfgang was released from prison as well. In interviews with local newspapers, he says he is ready to divulge more details about his crimes. The two men claim that they no longer are in contact with one another. That is a bold-faced lie. There's no way that you guys were best friends, decided to go on a killing spree together, and then now that you both are out of jail, you both are just not going to speak to each other? I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that in the slightest. The fact that they're out of jail is the craziest part. You're telling me 28 people are dead and 39 other people are wounded? You killed members of the church. You killed like priests and you get out after 30 years. You don't even serve life. You, you're you out after 30 years. And the thing is, they committed these crimes young. So these dudes are in their 50s. They're in their 50s. They can still go out and do it again. They're in their 50s. And something tells me that when Furland escaped from jail, he probably killed some more people. There's no way that you escape from jail. You're on the run for four years and the urge to, to ur the urge to kill people just magically goes away after you're in jail. I don't believe that. I don't believe it at all. It's ridiculous how these two guys are literally free walking around. Who knows where they're at? Nobody knows. There's very limited information on these guys. But it's just ridiculous how you can kill almost 30 people and the fact that what you did inspired more violence that should be a that should be a factor in your parole to me that should be a factor like should we really let this guy on the street if his antics and the way that he pushed his beliefs that inspire other people to commit acts of violence on others you know what i mean i feel like that's that should be a factor it should have been but you know these guys have been free for years now so 
I guess they've laid low because I haven't really found anything new about them. This story was just wild. I always kind of like to give you guys the obscure crime stories, like the ones, not the typical ones you've always heard. So this was a very weird one, a very unique one. But um, thank you so much for listening. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, don't forget to turn on the post notifications if you haven't already. Um, please be safe. Stay on the grind. I'm out. Peace.